Thank you, Malcolm, and good morning, all. Good afternoon to some of you logged in from a different time zone. Uh, welcome to all the analysts and investors uh, who have joined us uh, for this quarter two FY24 update call. I sincerely hope that you all are doing well. I'm sure you would have gone through the press release and the presentation uh, that has been uploaded on our website. Let me uh, start with an operational update followed by a financial update for the period ending September 30, 23. Now, uh, I would categorize this quarter as a as a strong and a steady quarter for ESL. Uh, and while I run through the, the bullets here, uh, you would realize why I'm saying this uh, uh, as well. Uh, on operational parameters, it was a very strong quarter with an average uh, system availability of more than 99.68, uh, uh, which actually led to an incentive income uh, for the company of rupees 26 crores during the quarter. The company added 219 circuit kilometers during the quarter and reached a, a mark of 19,862 circuit kilometers. Uh, Two important things which happened uh, this quarter uh, from a transmission business perspective is we fully commissioned uh, two very important lines which we dedicated to the, the nation, which is WKTN line, uh, Varora, Karnul, and Karur transmission lines as well. Both of them have been fully charged, and we are very proud of uh, this achievement because only WKTN line is... Uh, whopping 756 circuit kilometers. It's the largest inter-regional line, uh, which actually is 765 uh, KV line. On Karur, it's a 1,000 MVA capacity, and it actually is helping a green evacuation of 400 KV system in Tamil Nadu. Uh, very important two lines, while we did that, We've also commissioned Kargar Vikroli 74 circuit kilometers, 1500 MVA capacity, which is now helping Mumbai, uh, wherein 400 kV is actually coming close to the, the Mumbai for, uh, let's say, alternate uh, power supply as well. In terms of network addition and growth, a comparative number here is that by country level, we added 1% on YTD basis. AESL network growth was 5% in first half, uh, adding 769 circuit kilometers during this period. In terms of capacity addition, while country level growth was 2%, uh, YTD, AESL capacity growth was 15% uh, uh, in first half. Uh, also, in terms of our under construction pipeline, we are on track and will make significant progress in coming quarters. Uh, as you would know, we've been talking about uh, some of these projects which are MP2 package, the Khawra Bhuj line, and WRSR. I'm very happy to state that uh, the progress on these lines is, is going well, uh, and the WRSR line. These projects uh, together will add more than 1,300 circuit kilometers to the operational portfolio. While this is uh, something which is on the table, we are very buoyant about the upcoming transmission project pipeline, which is upward of rupees 1,26,971 crores, spanning around 12 to 24 months, uh, a lot of bidding to take place, and I'm sure you would you would be aware of uh, this. On the transmission business segment, uh, the, it translates into the financials of almost 8% operational revenue growth, which we achieved uh, equaling 941 crores of operational revenue in Q2. The revenue growth seen in the transmission business was partially driven by commissioning of these lines and some of the incentive income as well. In terms of EBITDA growth in the quarter, we achieved 9% growth with an EBITDA reaching an absolute number of 907 crores. Q2 PAT, as you would have uh, noticed, uh, for transmission business stands at 259 crores, which is an increase of 8.5%. From profitability point of view, we focus more on cash profit, which has come in at 501 crores, in quarter two, which was 4% higher uh, from the corresponding quarter. That was around the transmission business. Uh, let me touch on uh, the distribution business uh, a little. First, the operational update and then the financial update. Uh, then I will run into the consolidated numbers and then we'll open up for question and answers as well. 
At AEMS, the Mumbai Discom ensured supply reliability of 99.99%, uh, really a number which we are proud of, scoring well on all reliability parameters including SAIDI and SAIFI. The strong demand momentum continued in quarter two with energy demand improving by plus 9% year on year to around 2,446 million units. We managed to keep the distribution losses at a record low, which comes in at 5.81% uh, against 6% in quarter two of financial year 23. The distribution losses fell steeply due to seasonal factors like higher billing and almost uh, days amongst others. The collection efficiency stands at whopping 79.2%. The Another great aspect which I think we've been sharing transparently with uh, everyone which we are really proud of is the share of RE procurement in AML, uh, which increased to 38%, uh, uh, which is very unique. No uh, uh, distribution company can boast of such numbers. Uh, by the end of September, we are at 38% uh, as committed uh, under the July 2021 SLB uh, issuance. Received LOA now for smart meters. There is a lot of excitement around this line of uh, business. Uh, our, we've received LOA from Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, totaling to 14.76 million smart meters with a contract value of rupees 174 billion uh, during the, the quarter. We stand pretty excited about this line of business coming alive soon. A total smart metering under construction pipeline stands at 19.4 million smart meters, consisting of eight projects with a contract value of rupees 232 billion Indian rupees. On the distribution finance, financial side, once again, very steady uh, performance uh, uh, as well. The distribution segment revenue uh, stands at uh, absolute number of 2,480 crores in Q2 which increased by 15% year on year uh, on account of higher units sold and on account of customer acquisitions. The distribution uh, business continues to deliver very strong performance with double digit growth in revenue and operational EBITDA. Uh, the distribution pack was rupees 25 crores, which is up uh, due to uh, one time uh, uh, bookings which were made during the, the last year of the same quarter as well. Hence, it stands at 155% up year on year as well. So that was a snapshot of uh, the distribution business and the financials uh, of distribution as well. A, a quick comment on consolidated financials uh, uh, as well. Uh, our consolidated revenue, as you would have uh, noted, stands at 3,421 crores in quarter two, uh, witnessed a double-digit growth of 13% on account of uh, uh, you know, the, the commission, newly commissioned projects and uh, higher consumption in AEML as well. On consolidated basis, our EBITDA increased to rupees 1,443 crores in quarter two, an uh, increase of 6% year on year. Our PT, PBT of rupees uh, 370 crores was 48% higher year on year from a lower base. And consequently, our PAT ended 46% higher at rupees 284 crores, translating from a higher PBT as well. This actually gives you a snapshot and highlight of uh, uh, transmission business, the distribution business, and the consolidated uh, uh, financials. I'll take a pause here and uh, look forward to your questions and interaction uh, uh, during last next one hour. Thank you very much. Over to you for your questions, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICS Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. 
good morning sir uh so few questions on my side so first on the transmission pipeline we just spoke about 1.27 trillion uh when they expect the entire pipeline to get converted into you need to know the proper in the sense they expect the update to get completed and and and, and is the and is is all the rsq and rsp have been floated already or you are hello yeah thanks mohit uh, for your uh, question uh, your question is around uh, liquidation of uh, this 126971 number which i quoted as the transmission uh, pipeline uh let me back off a a, a little uh, uh this is uh, uh, the source of all this is uh, the the document which came out in uh, november december last year uh, highlighting uh, the 500 gigawatt ambition uh, uh, with the the mop has laid down for uh, green evacuation uh as a consequence uh, a lot of uh, transmission which needs to be added and i think the total number there was uh, by 2030 the number was uh, almost 250000 crores uh what we see is uh, in next 12 to 24 months uh we will be seeing liquidation of uh, this 126000 uh, odd crores of pipeline as we speak Uh, the bidding and the reverse auction is going on uh, primarily to very heavyweight uh, evacuations which are actually uh, lined up uh, one is the rajasthan corridor uh, uh, as well and the second one is evacuation for uh, uh, for kavra uh, which is uh, almost a 30 gigawatt uh, you know the the country's uh, largest corridor which is coming up which we are proudly participating both from our uh, solar side and from uh, the the transmission side as well uh, i think there is a small number which is left uh, wherein the rfps have not been issued but most most of the rfps have been issued uh, uh, as well and we strongly feel that um, a lot of this bidding uh, will take place in in next 3 to 6 months and uh, i think we will see a, a, a lot of movement and conversion of this into orders as well uh, this quarter is certainly going to be very heavy uh, with reverse options coming up as well so i hope this answers your question more yes sir that helps sir my second question is on this uh, bhadla satyagarh i think the largest hvdc line uh, is up for bidding what is the timeline and are we bidding for the same and then and the related question is that are you facing any issues or or, or you know contemplating any issues from sourcing the the hvdc equipment i we understand that there is a, the all the factories are full across the world so look uh, we are we are uh, very interested in such corridors and uh, such projects as well because uh, from the group's perspective one of the things which we have demonstrated is uh, an unparalleled uh, uh, project execution capabilities right from let's say kvtl or wktl or the the india's or southeast asia's first hvdc line which we brought up uh, as well which we are maintaining so we are pretty much the only ones uh, uh, in this uh, uh, segment so yes uh, we are we are very keen and also rightly capable to execute uh, this project well there is this is no secret that uh, you know um, there is a, a, a dearth of uh, suppliers in uh, you know uh, 765 and above uh, uh, segment as well however we are pretty much working on all quarters including uh, you know a uh, strategic discussions with some of them uh, at the moment to secure our uh, uh, equipment uh, and hence I, i i don't think i would like to raise a red flag on on this one as well only thing i would like to say is uh, to sum up yes we are interested yes we are very excited about it as well and yes we are working to make sure uh, that we we if we are successful we will really deliver this on time uh, with finesse which we are known for 
Thank you, Mohit. The third question is, how to progress an HVDC institution which we are building up in Mumbai? And uh, how much cap is being cut till date? You mean the uh, the HVDC uh, Mumbai line, which is under the yes, structure? Mumbai, Mumbai, yes, sir. Rohit, uh, yeah. so, so Mohit, hi, Mohit. So HVDC Mumbai is project is running on track. Uh, what they communicated, we are looking at to be commissioned in uh, 25, 26. Uh, uh, total capex, what we had committed is close to around uh, 6,600 to 7,000 crores. Again, that uh, our current spend is close to 1,100 to 1,200 crores, what we already spent. Uh, most of the equipments have been ordered. It's more of scheduling of those equipments, which needs to be delivered uh, from Indian sites and also from international sites. So you will see more heavy spending coming in the next 18 months to deliver this project on track more. Understood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Moet. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhiram Ayer from Dosh Bank. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, congrats for a good set of results. Uh, my first question was on um, the reg uh, change in regulatory capital balance. Um, so we booked a reversal of about 300 crores in the first quarter, and then now this is down to like 180 crores. Can you just Help me understand why we are sort of now uh, under collecting back again uh, with respect to what we had what we had collected in one queue. That's question one. Um, question two is more in, uh, time, uh, in lines of AML debt. Could you uh, provide us a gross uh, debt number, including all uh, working capital loans, uh, and uh, what's the cash balance at AML? Uh, additionally, uh, is there any um, plans to provide support to the AML bonds currently? And what's your view on the current sort of rating outlook and how will it be resolved by? Yeah, sure. And so I'll request uh, Kunjal to respond. Uh, sure. So first question was with, uh, was with respect to the regulatory asset base. So the amount currently stands at 7,870 crores. Now, if you look at it, uh, you see the reduction that's primarily on account of the depreciation which is provided in the first six months. And as you would know, the capitalization or the addition to the regulatory asset base does not happen in the first half. I mean, the first half is generally during the monsoon, so we do not add any uh, asset uh, base to the regulatory asset base. And therefore, you would see that the capitalization has, uh, has happened only of 200 odd crores. And the reduction on account of the normal depreciation is slightly higher by about 300 crores. So therefore, you feel that there is a reduction in the regulatory asset base uh, 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 at the end of September. But if you, I mean, uh, once the monsoon are over, the capitalization will peak, and therefore there will be a significant increase in uh, in the regulated asset base. We are working towards a capitalization of the uh, addition of the regulated asset base in the range of about 1200 odd crores by the end of this financial year. And this will significantly increase the regulated asset base by the uh, by March 2024. So it's only a timing difference uh, that you are seeing a reduction in the regulated asset base. Uh, otherwise, the regulated asset base by the end of the financial year would also increase in line with what we have already committed. Second was with respect to the gross debt and the cash balance that we have. Uh, so basically, the, there has been no increase in the debt balance or the uh, 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 any additional borrowing which uh, AEML has done. The company currently has a gross debt of 11,367 crores, which includes a subordinated debt from the shareholder, that is QIS. Without the QIS debt, the Total gross debt is 9,350 crores. We do not have any working capital, so the gross debt uh, is 9,350 crores. The cash balance that the company has is uh, 1,183 crores. So the net debt is 8,167. That is $1,300 million of two bonds and $140 million of cash. So equivalent to 1160 million dollars of net debt that the company has. 
Understood. Uh, and with respect to, uh, uh, as, I, as I asked, is there any current plans in order to support the bonds in the market? Uh, given where they are pricing at, I believe that they don't currently reflect what AEML should be priced at. Is there any plans so, from the company in that sense? So we will come out with the plans as and when it is approved. Currently, there are no such plans. But the company does take, I mean, does note that the yields are not fairly priced. So the management will work to uh, towards the correct correcting the fair price. Currently, there are no such announcements. Understood. And one last question. Uh, this is more on uh, Alani Energy Solutions as a whole. Uh, what's the is given that you've already sort of uh, gotten approval from the shareholders for an equity raise, is and sort of indicated it uh, that this, by you know the wider group that this is going to be completed towards the end of this year. Uh, are there any changes to the timeline now? Uh, is is this is this mooted equity raise going to happen next year now? Abhiram, I mean, thanks for that. Abhiram, I mean, I would say the plan is on. Uh, so the only way which we are thinking is what is the right timing and what is the instruments to be used. So uh, this was more from enabling where we said we are looking at a billion dollar of raise. So I think we're still working on it. Uh, so the time what we're given by year end, that still holds good from our perspective. And uh, I mean, just to give assurance, I mean, uh, the current uh, growth, what we have, uh, the equity support 100% exists for it because we are generating enough cash uh, from the transmission segment also and from the distribution segment. Uh, given the pipeline is going to be a bit more healthier than what uh, we had anticipated, so to prepare ourselves uh, for the higher capex growth pipeline, which comes as an opportunity, uh, we thought that equity raise would help us for us to grow further. But with the current pipeline projects, what we have, they are uh, fully supported with the equity what we have in the business. Understood, understood. Perfect, thanks. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of property from Alliance Bernstein. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, just, uh, I wanted to check with you on your credit ratings. Uh, I understand that Adani Electricity is on a negative outlook by both the rating agencies. Uh, so, wanted to get some sense on what kind of conversations the company has had with the rating agency and what are they looking at to resolve this outlook back to stable, hopefully, in the, and, and if there are any timelines around that. That is my first question. Um, secondly, um, I do recall um, in a couple of uh, a couple of quarters back when we had met, there was this mention of a potential U.S. private placement for uh, as as a part of your debt debt management plan. So, are there any updates around that? Uh, would appreciate your response on these. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Sabri. Thanks. Thanks for your questions. Uh, so the first one on the rating, I think uh, uh, we have been uh, actively communicating. In fact, I would say we are over-communicating with the agencies uh, given the last six, seven months through which we have been. Uh, uh, so the engagements happen at multiple levels. Um, and if you see, uh, we have gone through the whole grind uh, of the rating agencies, uh, both uh, domestic as well as international. Now, our ratings stay intact. Uh, the only thing which... Uh, got changed was the outlook uh, and predominantly standing out of two reasons. One is uh, the noise around uh, the wider portfolio, that's part A. And part B, given the noise around it, there can be any possible uh, cost increase uh, on uh, some of the loans which the company might have to tie up in the days to come. And given those two reasons, the rating agency has put on a negative outlook. Uh, we have been actively engaging with them. Uh, I think um, last... Uh, Six months have been, uh, I would say, uh, learning from our perspective and also from the market. Last three months, I would say, uh, a lot of positive development. I think uh, active engagements are on. Uh, we should shortly uh, see certain uh, positive developments, but uh, that's uh, more coming out of what the noise gets suppressed kind of thing. So that, that's the part on the rating side. Uh, we, we are actively engaging. In fact, over uh, engagement is happening at this point. Um, that's part A. I think roughly the part two was uh, U.S. private placements. I mean, yes, uh, we, were, we were and we are looking for a private placement of uh, $360 million of uh, transmission assets which were commissioned in the last uh, three, four years. 
Uh, that's the size of 360 million US dollar. The you know, transactions, paperwork, all are underway. We are just um, working with would be the right uh, opportunistic time for us to um, conclude the deal. Uh, so the homework and the paperwork is happening at the back end. So we are still working if we can uh, get it uh, early next year. That's what we are working. So the work is still in progress. Okay, thank you. Uh, just just one follow up on the part A of the question. So is there any trigger or any event that these dating agencies are waiting for? Um, say, for instance, completion of this U.S. private placement, they will check the cost of funding, or for that matter, even a Bunny Green sort of refinancing that happens. Is this something that these dating agencies are waiting for before uh, revising the outlook, or there could be various other elements as well involved in this? No, uh, no, no, absolutely there's nothing of that sort. I mean, I'll again uh, reiterate, all of our financing happens at uh, cash flow generating SPVs and they all are refinanced uh, from their own operational. So there's nothing which they're waiting at this point of time. I think uh, it's more on the noise what we have uh, on the outlook side, that's the only part. Uh, the USPP, I don't think uh, there's any uh, uh, rate for which they're looking because all, uh, whatever we have done, they are either fixed price coupons uh, they are self-contained by themselves. So I don't think we're waiting anything at this point of time for. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharanidhar from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Can I... Uh... Uh, can I can I go ahead? Is it audible? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Baranathar. Your voice is not uh, audible. Could you speak a little louder? Are you speaking from a speakerphone? I would request you to speak from your headset. Yeah, so I've I've uh, changed to the phone only. So is it audible now? Management, is it audible? Yeah, better, better, better. Better. Yeah. Okay, sure. So, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. So I just wanted to find out uh, because in the initial remark you spoke about a 1.27 lakh. Uh, opportunity in the next 12 to 24 months. Even the National Committee on Transition is talking about a 70,000 crore kind of a pipeline in the near term. But uh, if we see the actual projects that have been awarded, it's uh, closer to 10,000 to 15,000 crore kind of a number on an average per year. So just wanted to find out what are the reasons why uh, actually on the ground projects getting awarded are on a much lower level. And what are the challenges for uh, uh, this awarding activity? Yeah, uh, thanks, Arnar, uh, for this uh, question. Uh, once again, I'll take a, a, a step back, uh, uh, and I think if you uh, if you go back few quarters, uh, you will realize that there was hardly any bidding that was uh, taking place, and I think at that time one of the mature uh, corridors of Gujarat uh, of uh, Rajasthan was actually stuck because of uh, the, the GID uh, issues which actually got cleared. Uh, I think if, I, if my memory serves me right, uh, uh, around the first quarter or second quarter, calendar quarter uh, uh, this year. Uh, post that, uh, we started to see a lot of uh, traction. Um, at the moment, uh, uh, as we speak, uh, even uh, I think today and tomorrow there is uh, bidding and reverse auction uh, taking place as well for uh, one of the Rajasthan corridors as well. So uh, I think as I mentioned earlier that this backlog uh, is being cleared uh, in, a, in a very fast manner as well. Let me give you the significance and the reason why this, this I believe, uh, this backlog will be cleared off as well. Uh, as you would know that uh, uh, Rajasthan corridor uh, uh, needs a lot of upgradation and a lot of evacuation uh, 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 as well. And uh, on Gujarat side as well, the, the Kavada project uh, uh, evacuation is almost getting ready at the moment in next, uh, let's say, uh, a quarter, quarter or two, and you'll, you'll realize that, uh, you know, uh, the generation will possibly start uh, as well. Uh, once it starts, I think we'll, we'll see very heavy numbers coming in as well. And I don't think uh, uh, this time uh, we will actually miss out on evacuation that the transmission lines are not ready and uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, the farms ready as well. So uh, I think uh, in in next 
next uh, one quarter, you will certainly see the large bids uh, coming out uh, uh, as well. So I'm not too worried about month here or two. Uh, yes, uh, whatever has happened is a smaller number, but what is going to happen in next two quarters, uh, there will be a lot of catching up that will take place uh, uh, as well. So there are big ones lined up, including HVDC uh, uh, as well. Okay. Okay, so that is very clear. So, if I were to just uh, ask about the potential on this HVDC line, this is this Batla Patepur uh, line, right? That's right. So, there are yeah, there's so, one HVDC line there and uh, two coming up in, in Kavala uh, uh, as well, phase uh, 5. And what would be the name of that, sir? So, we, this is uh, phase 5A and uh, C, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, these are fairly heavy projects uh, uh, in Kavla. So, this Batla Fatehpur and the two uh, in Kavla put together, how much would be the total size, sir? Would it be each 10,000 so, crore kind of so a number? First, for the Batla is 12,000 odd, uh, I think uh, uh, phase 5A is 24,000 and uh, C is uh, 12,000 uh, uh, as well. That is very helpful. Uh, all the best and uh, uh, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Abhyankar from ICICS Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is regarding the smart metering. So, what is the current uh, order, like the bidding pipeline that we have, which are the large tenders that we are expecting to open up in, say, next, in this festival? Thanks. Uh, I'll request Kunjal to respond. Sure. So, basically, as already communicated, uh, so the total uh, smart metering pipeline that we have is around 19 million uh, meters and uh, we, we uh, so uh, and that that roughly works out to around total contract value of about 232 million uh, this thing the total size which is there is around 23 million uh, uh, quantities of smart meters which are available out of which we have already signed or are selected l1 under the 19 million meters so uh, I was asking for uh, incremental order inflows going forward. So, so basically, see, this is a big process, and as and when the bids are won, we increment. So the total pie which is available across India is uh, is about 25 crore meters. So that is that's a huge pipeline. Out of which we we have won around close to two crore meters. Okay, and so out of this. 232 billion uh, worth of uh, order that we have. So, what is the expected capex for these, and when should we expect the revenues to start coming in? Sure. So, so the capex part is is dependent on various types of the technology and various types of the topography that is there included in it. I mean, the 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 typical size of of the uh, project as well as the total uh, uh, the entire architecture that we deploy on smart meters is dependent on it. It's very difficult to quote a particular number as to what would be mm -hmm. the capex size. But suffice to say that the entire uh, smart meter in project is significantly value accretive to AESL, uh, and and roughly in in that range of around 15 to 20 percentage uh, incremental uh, returns are expected from smart metering. Okay. So, and also, since a lot of smart metering orders have been given out in the past one, one and a half year, so, so are we, do you expect to face any sourcing issues for such a large number of meters? And are we also compliant with the 65% local value addition norms? Do we expect to meet that? So, smart metering is not a very, very uh, technology uh, this thing. So basically the entire technology, entire infrastructure which is there is locally available in India. So we, have, we will be able to comply with whatever requirements are there. I mean the uh, metering technology has been prevalent in India since several times. There could be certain pieces of communication which we could uh, need to be imported but that also is evolving 
and we will be able to meet the requirements of whatever Make in India or the local requirements are there. Uh, the more important uh, thing which is there is that the entire uh, backhand or the supply chain has now evolved and, and there, there is an entire ecosystem uh, which will cater to this uh, demand of completing the smart metering. On, on your question earlier, question as to when the revenue will arise, the most important part of this project is that the uh, cash to capex cycle is very, very limited. I mean, we do not have to wait for 24 months or 36 months for the entire uh, project to get completed and then start earning the revenue. The revenue will start earning as and when the meters are installed. So it's more like a churning of a working capital uh, deployment which is required or the capital which is required. So in three months, four months time, as and when the capex is incurred, we will immediately start earning the revenue. So that's the beauty of this project is that the cash to capex cycle is very, very limited unlike other, other projects or other infrastructure. Okay. And so have we started ordering for these meters already? Yes, yes. We, we have all started ordering. So the first first uh, project that we won was uh, in the best region, which is in South Mumbai. The other project is in the Assam. For both these projects, uh, we have started ordering uh, for the entire uh, meter requirements. Okay. So then just a final question on parallel licensing. So any, any update on that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nikhil. Uh, so the application which we have made to MERC for Navi Mumbai and UPRC for um, Gautam Buddha Nagar, uh, there are certain additional requirements which Commission asked us to submit, which we are we have submitted recently. So now they'll be processing our applications at both the states. Okay. Okay. Thank you and all the best. And wish you a happy Diwali. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you. All. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Love Sharma from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, thank, thanks everybody for the uh, for the time. Uh, just a couple of questions. If you could just highlight on the capex side, uh, what is the total capex we're looking to do at Adani transmission for the entire this year, and how much has been spent in the first half, uh, uh, and excluding AEML. And secondly, related to that would be on the funding side, has there been any new facilities or any new funding which you have arranged on the debt side to take care of this, uh, of the CAPEX requirements? Uh, and tied to that would be the, the, the go-to-market or the construction facilities. If you could just highlight how much is the availability there and if you're looking to add something more to that. Thanks. Yeah, please go ahead. Love, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, good to hear from you again. Uh, so I think uh, CapEx, uh, you asked three set of questions, I think, on CapEx. Uh, uh, the guidelines, what we have been giving is uh, every year we look between uh, 55 to 60 billion of CapEx, that's uh, sacrosanct for it. Uh, so we have been on track for it, and our first half numbers are also in line with those numbers. I think we have been close to around 25 uh, billion of CapEx so far. and. Uh, that, that's the capex number four. Yeah. Second part is funding. I would say very good quarter from a funding perspective. Uh, so uh, we have been able to do the financial closure for uh, HVDC line, which is under construction in Mumbai. Uh, the first drawdown happened in this quarter, uh, so that has happened significantly. Uh, then uh, uh, there were four more projects uh, for which we were working on financial closures, which got concluded in this quarter of which uh, for two projects we've been able to draw the funds also to the tune of uh, 750 crores uh, across 80, 85 million or US dollars. So that is on the financial closure and funding. So that's uh, working pretty well. Uh, the third part of this it was go-to-market facility, uh, which you are referring to the construction facility. Uh, if you take the construction facility, what we have done was a 700 million dollar construction facility revolving up to 1.1, of which I think two transmission lines, which were WRSS and uh, Sakarya Banaskata LBTL line were commissioned last year. I think we used $170 million for the construction facility line for them. So those lines are operational. Um, this is what we do on the USPP. Those limits can be vacated out. Uh, KVTL, I think uh, Mr. Dayanji mentioned about it, that KV line has been uh, connected to the grid. We are just waiting for the legal circuit to be completed. With that, the KVTL project should also be done. We are targeting that to happen in this quarter. So with that, the third line also gets constructed. So all the funds would be available for the HVDC construction. Currently, $300 million is what is uh, 
uh, the first uh, tranche of it. I think uh, that would take care for most of the requirements for this year and early for next year. So uh, the go-to-market facilities are operating well for us. Uh, the funding have also happened, which is a very positive from the thing, and they have been in line with what we expected. So that, that's where we stand up. Thank you, Roy. Thanks very much. Uh, I appreciate So just to confirm, the, the go-to-market facility or the concession facility, the current availability is how much again? Uh, out of the so, end of 1.1 million dollars? So, so, KB, so the, for KBTL, uh, we have uh, the balance, uh, I think it was close to around $230 million. Uh, that is available for KBTL. Uh, we have drawn, uh, I would say, between 80 to $85 million. The balance will be taken out or there might be saving to that extent. Uh, the HBDC is a $300 million tranche fund. That fund is available. Those that take out the balance portal would be available. So total $700 million go-to-market facility available for HBDC. Total $700, okay, I understand. Got it. Okay, and then on the EO, um, uh, just one more question on the facilities or the financial closure of the lines which you mentioned. I believe those are the uh, facilities uh, in the onshore uh, loan market. Correct. Uh, so we, we have drawn those funds from the onshore uh, market. Uh, so we have not done any offshore. Offshore, we have done the construction facility and we have done the onshore. Uh, mm -hmm. For the completion, I mean, uh, uh, we have been communicating earlier also, I mean, as a de-risking strategy mm -hmm. for management post the completion period and say one year of history, we look at uh, go-to-market facilities mm -hmm. or take out a long-term ultra bond where the interest are fixed. And so there's a return to the shareholder and the cash flows and everything is uh, no one and they minimize the risk kind of thing. So that would happen. That's the part of the normal cycle uh, which we do it. So that's the reason why we have this uh, private placement uh, uh, discussions going on. Suppose that again, say we are now a year and a half later, we'll again look at similar kind of facilities to be done. Okay, and, and on just on that quick last question from me, the, uh, could you share the pricing on this uh, from the, the onshore project loans which you would have raised? And what kind of pricing and dinner have you got? So I would say at market, uh, I mean, if you're looking at exact number, it ranges between, say, 9.5 to 10 kind of number. 9.5 to 10 percent. Okay. I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, one more question. And last question for me, sorry, again. Um, for AEML, I believe you have not released the Q1 uh, results yet. Uh, is there any timeline as to when you could expect Q1 and Q2 from AEML? Uh, say again, love. Uh, we, we couldn't hear the last week. So, no, what I meant for the for AEML, right, Rani Mumbai, <clears throat> uh, I believe um, I couldn't see the Q1 and Q2 numbers on the website. Uh, is there a timeline as to when you would be releasing those? So, so, we release it on today, between today and tomorrow, we release. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The yeah. next question is from the line of Abiram Ayer from Dosh Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just a follow-up question on, on the HVDC line. Uh, is this still structurally under uh, AEML as of now, uh, or has this been shifted already? The no, the, the structure is still the same, Mavira. Got it. And the plan is still to complete the construction under AEML and then shift it later? Yeah, that would be decided at that point of time. Got it. Understood. Mr. Abhiram Ayer, are you done with your question? Yeah, I am done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sharon Chen from Bloomberg. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on a good set of results and thanks for taking my question. Just to clarify on the CapEx guidance, um, can you break it down this year's CapEx guidance by transmission, smart meters, and also distribution? And given, you know, you've talked a lot about the strong pipeline, do you expect CapEx to increase from next year? Thank you. Sharon, I think uh, the annual CapEx guidelines, what we had said, 55 billion to 60 billion. Um, uh, if we take uh, broad numbers for this current year, we should be looking at between, say, 45 to 50. Uh, billion coming on the transmission segment. Uh, if you take uh, AEML, which is a distribution segment, that stays between uh, 10 to 13 billion. That's part B. And smart meter, I think uh, 
commissioning and uh, deployment just started uh, in this current year. So I think it will be a small number even product. So that, that will progress around. Uh, we have got a 30 month uh, window for construction. So that would happen predominantly in the next uh, year and then year later to it. Uh, you were asked what is it likely to happen uh, going forward. I think uh, with the HVDC line, uh, which is connecting Mumbai, uh, that is going to be a big capital investment of say 6,500 to 7,000 odd crores. So that would see more spending coming on that line in the next couple of years. So you might see a bit elevated capex spending, but more or less in line with the guidance what we have been communicating earlier. So that's why we stand share. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand over the conference over to Mr. Bimal Dayar for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your questions and thank you for uh, joining in on uh, uh, this call. We really remain excited about uh, what we are doing, excited about the sector uh, we are in and uh, the, the growth uh, uh, and the, the participation in, uh, you know, the the, the coming uh, tenders as well. So there is a lot happening, as you would would know. Uh, with this, uh, I would only say that uh, uh, eyes down for the the coming quarter. And as you would uh, know, that uh, we are also entering into this uh, festive season uh, uh, as well. So I don't want to miss an opportunity to wish you and all your loved ones, uh, you know, uh, a happy Diwali and a Merry Christmas uh, as well. Stay safe. Thank you very much once again for joining in. Thank you. Thanks, Malcolm. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of Adani Energy Solution, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.